you were in charge of an agency that it's responsible for research in terms of infrastructure, in terms of building, in terms of road, yet we, we've, we're seeing dilapidated structures in Nigeria, we're seeing uncompleted projects, we're seeing uh, abandoned projects. What do you have to say about that? Did you contribute your own quota when you were there to make things better? Well, I think um, we did a lot to solve this problem. It was a lingering problem. And um, we need to get to the roots of why this problem. With regards to the, with regards to the reputation of buildings, particularly public buildings, buildings for which government invested a lot of money to put up. Go look at the federal sector, look at some state sector, look at some schools. The key problem is that as soon as the structures are put in place, I don't want to, I, I will address the issue of even the quality of the work and to what extent standards were maintained. I've always said this, even while I was a DG of Nibri. Then the problem is that no post-occupancy evaluation is carried out. Even in our homes, we're supposed to periodically carry out what we call post-occupancy evaluation. By that, you, I mean, you go back and look at the, you've been in occupation of that place for a year or two. Public buildings, maybe every two years or every three years, you go back and say, can we look at the areas of common decay, the areas that suffer the easiest decay, and look at it and evaluate it. After, that's post-occupancy. And know to what extent is decayed, and then try to check it early. The same applies to roads also. If we have a, if the Federal Minister of Works, particularly the regional offices, we have offices, Federal Minister of Work, the engineers, the, the road department, they're supposed to apply the road between Abuja and Lokoja, for example, or between Abuja and Kefi. Look at the wonderful, beautiful road that was done between Abuja and Nyanya and Kefi. And by the time he goes on it, he will notice those portals. And the next thing to do is that, Fine, he takes record of them. Even look at the aesthetics of the road. It's not only the, the road where the vehicles ply. The caps in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the middle of the road, grass bushes, they are all overgrown by bush. You look at it and immediately you come back, you put up your report and you try to solve it because you've done the analysis, you've done the evaluation. Now, why are projects abandoned? Projects are abandoned basically. There are a few reasons. Let me highlight a few to give room for my colleague also mm -hmm. to contribute. Uh, the, 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 the most the, the common reason for evaluating the abandonment of project is corruption, whether we like it or not. Corruption in what sense? Corruption the in the process of the, the contractors are corrupt. The, even the, procurement, the, the process. procurement process is also itself faulty and uh, corrupt most times. So when you award a contract to a guy and you expect him to return some percentage of the money meant for the job to be executed, he gives it to you. Already you have, you have already sacrificed any authority you have to question him when it's not working because you share that the money, you've taken part of that money from him. And when that happens, invariably the man abandons the project. Some okay. people collect money for roads, for example, collect the equipment, the mobilization for roads. Why are the roads always with people that suffer in the infrastructure? He takes the money for machinery, mobilization to machinery. By the time he, he makes the returns he does on those, the payments made to be, he doesn't have even enough money to buy all the tools he okay. needs. Okay, let me hold Then you. the next is planning. No, let, 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 let me hold you and, and bring in a touch of being. Uh, you know, while I was also ruminating around this topic, uh, it came to my mind that is it that Nigeria has an infrastructural deficit problem or it is a situation of non-completion of current infrastructure on ground? I hope you understand yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> is it that we have an infrastructure so, deficit or what we are currently building or what we are currently putting on ground, there is a non-completion of it? Yes, uh, it's in two ways. But uh, one of the major problem is uh, in fact, uh, the way they abandon infrastructures. And the key solution to that problem, or the, uh, the genesis of problem is the systematic uh, way of handling uh, uh, projects in Nigeria. We don't take into cognizance a project manager. We, you know, there, there was one time a GM, uh, president of uh, the General Electrical Service, that the problem of Nigeria is not because uh, 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 we have much infrastructure decay, but because we don't have good project manager. A lot of people mistake project manager to project consultant. The project manager, a consultant is just a unit, a team of a project manager. Because most of these projects are abandoned in the sense uh, uh, because of lack of lease of fund. And for any project, for you to conceive any project, two things are key. The funding 
and the deliverable time. And if the funding is not uh, uh, available, how will you deliver the project? Take for example now, they say they release uh, this uh, national, uh, national housing scheme. It's a three-year scheme. Now, three years, to the, the highest there is three-bedroom flat. For three years now, nobody has been able to occupy one out of the three-bedroom flat. What normally I build my three-bedroom flat in less than 30 days. Three years now. Just because the, if they've engaged the service of project manager, let's say this scheme is three years, we have three billion. How do we do it? The project manager will advise, he will ask you, what is the resources available for this year? One billion. He will calculate exactly deliverable uh, 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 timelines and what time can line, this one, one, billion one billion can take on. And he will see if we go ahead and look at, at instead of awarding the contract in the whole 36 state. We say, okay, I'm on this is geopolitical zone. Which one has critical housing problem? Let's say not this, because of the crisis. If we plan this one billion within one year to build us in the North East and deliver it. So and they start using. Okay, so but now they spread the, the three billion, three years, and the project keep on ongoing. If you have borrowed the money from bank, will you wait for two years before you start paying interest? So you see that after the, for three years now, the housing scheme, none of the site is delivered. So okay. the importance of project manager, if you involve project man, uh, manager in, in our plan. Is it plan, that the government do not have project managers? They because mistake well, the project consultant. Well, okay. they do have project managers because the agencies that are responsible for these uh, projects, the agencies are responsible for these projects, they are, in, they are in, invariably supposed, they pro supposed to be managing the projects. The problem again is that, like he's talking about the issue of consultants. You need consultants. Consultants have to play their own role. The project uh, administrators have to. Um, project but I think what we're play. also seeing in Nigeria is an overdependence on project consultants. But increasingly, the, the consultants, no, 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 increasingly the consultants are, are usurping the role. There are different uh, between project a project manager. consultant manager and, 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 a and a project manager. So a project consultant yeah. will just design and implement. For a project manager, we serve this, uh, the role of an administrator. It's a middleman between the client and the contractor. Okay. Even though risk management yes. is part of their duty. Okay. Uh, we seem not to address my question, which I asked earlier. Yes. You know, which is the issue of, is, the, is Nigeria suffering an infrastructure deficit problem or a non-completion of the existing infrastructure? Well, I think uh, I'm I have to say both. Okay. We have a deficit in infrastructure. We have a deficit def Definitely. But then also, this deficit is made more obvious and made more mm -hmm. serious by the non-completion of even oh. the war of projects that are even started. Okay. And that's again boils down to the issue of planning. Okay. Now that brings me to the question of planning. What can we do to improve infrastructure policy and planning to also build that resilient infrastructure? Because we've seen that even in, 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 in recent times that if we build infrastructure, Go back there like in two years, three years. Either you have a collapsed building or maintenance culture is not good or something is happening. What do we do from the policy and planning side? I think we need to have our policies re-engineered. We have to have the human being, the human, the, the, the human being, the, the human beings yeah, that you're actually... you talking of human capacity Human now, capacity. We work to build up human capacity. But in fact, even those that already have the capacity, we need to have a re-engineering of their mindset and then um, what they're going that Look, we're trying to deliver, deliver a project for use by Nigeria and Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And then when you have the right mindset, then you go about doing things the proper way. You take, for example, you want to build a house. We've, I think we've had issues. Sometimes we talked about a building collapse. Why are buildings collapsing? Because the standards are not maintained. After the buildings are the design, the building is designed, the engineers that are supposed to supervise the normal supervisory role of development authorities, whereby you're supposed to go in at foundation level, go in at lintel, go in at this, and to make sure things are done. Most times, also to make sure that this building that has been designed and approved for a single story 
is built for a single story, not a three story building. And then when you overload the foundation, of course it collapses. And then the right mampa using the right materials, the right mix of yes, many, the right rods, the right uh, bearing, the load bearing elements, were they properly put in place? Most times that is not the case. And the professionals here, I hold them responsible because they are actually the ones who are also supposed to put in place. They put in place standards and they're supposed they are supposed to supervise and show them. The, let's the come hold. to let's come to infrastructure financing. Because you can't build infrastructure if you don't have money. The money. Um, I, I do know that it's, uh, according to the ICRC uh, chief at the time, he did tell us that Nigeria needs about 60 billion. Yes. Is it? Yes, 60, 60 billion. About 60, 60, 60 billion, billion dollars, dollars for infrastructure in the next six years. Yes. Uh, we'll need about 60 billion for oil and gas, 20 billion dollars for power infrastructure. Uh, between 8 to 17 billion for road uh, for rail, rail line. then about 6 billion for roads yes. the question is our financing model for the, for infrastructure has it failed us should we be looking at more innovative financial models to drive infrastructural growth in nigeria yes it has completely failed us in, in the sense that look at even our budgeting process now you design a project you release up to 80 percent and, and you'll be you'll be saying that oh i have released 80 percent so far is it not up to 80 percent no and i'm <laughs> saying for <laughs> usually not up to 80 and, uh, uh, and the time and the timing so also it's yeah, as good the as the yeah. timing work was done critical. is it zero yes because if all the project at 50 percent completion then you cannot make use of any of the project so that's why it's important instead of us building our financing on assumption why not we save for the year after paying salary and the rest. This is what we have left for 2019. But there's a we capital component. There's a capital component in the budget that that is, that is it's provided is for. Yes, it's provided, provided for. for. Well, the important thing is yeah. the, the point thing, okay, if you provide okay, like you say, capital project is three trillion. Uh, nine. But we know that even the capital project, they are also sell, uh, buying of computers, cars, cars and all and that. Yeah. But yeah. there are also there are also components there that are. Uh, used to build roads for and roads all yeah, that. Yes, like yes, for, yes. for road infrastructure yes. and the rest. You have to, in planning, you have to plan based on the resources available. Not to plan on assumptions you get to the midway. No. I, 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 uh, I think the, the, no the, budget, the bu budget is actually geared. You can never plan a budget, national budget, based on the number amount of money. If we have $1 million, then you plan a budget. You have some anticipate, anticipated source of funds, like we know. The bulk of our economy is funded by oil. Also. We also know about how much the volume of oil we market in a day. We will market in a year. And then we will know the price. Usually the, the benchmark, the is benchmark there the price budget? is there in the yeah. b budget. And hardly, with my experience, both in and out of government, have I ever noticed that benchmark having problem, except at a particular time when the price of oil dropped, dropped, to, yeah. dropped to $8 or $9 or $20. Some long, some a few years ago, up to about 15, 20 years ago. All incre increasing, that's why we now have the so-called excess crude account. account, excess crude account. So that money is expected. The important thing, about the problem is that the release of these funds, when, as at when due, as at when required. Because when you design a project, and feed it into the budget. And you say this project is going to cost us uh, 10 million naira. Let me use 10 million naira, for example. And by this project, this budget is supposed to have started in January, running from January. And by May, I don't even know if fund release has been affected uh, mm -hmm. for no. 2018. Because a lot of ministries are even uh, complaining uh, they've not gotten the third quarter of 2017. 17. So at the end of the day, you already have a failure. You have already have a project failure. You have already, failed. Failed. You have already and project and failure and before you start. Even when it has been started, and then you pay the contract, the first instrumental payment, and then you go and get certificates. By the time you are getting the second certificate, the second quarter budget has not been released. And because the second quarter has not been released, you can't pay fund that certificate. And the man tries to scribble a little bit, and he says, well, I cannot continue. He walks away. Now, to remobilize to the site, oh, oh, okay, okay. Okay. the project is already abandoned. Yeah, okay, okay, come in. Let me, before I ask what I want to ask, yeah. Just okay. uh, and that's why, that instead of you planning on assumption that there may be from the why not at the end of the year? Like uh, the best uh, example of uh, this thing is third form. You know, third form projects, you can never see third form project abandoned. Because you're, before they give you your approval in principle, the money is already on ground. And if you don't finish this year project, you cannot assess next year. 
So that one, you hardly see any of the project abandoned. Now the question which which came up, why, why, which I thought of while you were talking, is that should we be less dependent on the budget now for funding infrastructure? Should we? Yes. 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 I think uh, uh, Should we go into other financing models like primary financing, like from banks, where banks also finance projects, uh, you know, also try to make that money back through bonds or uh, engage the private sector, like what Dangote and a host of others I are doing co I, concerning I roads, for example? I must, I must be frank with you that it's come to a point when this country should begin to think that we've grown, we've come of age. In most countries, this Indonesia 15, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, Indonesia. Indonesia. Most of the infrastructure in Indonesia were, were funded from banks and from uh, 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 this PPP. Some of them, in the, you just take this road is decayed. I want to be like Dangote is doing the road from uh, his uh, this main plan to, to Kaba. To Kaba. Kaba. And then you take this road, you build it. Then you're allowed to put, you're allowed to put uh, a toll and you collect them, but government has a primary responsibility to still uh, provide access for its citizens. So what the government does is to go by the side of the, the, this other road and make sure you sustain a route where those who cannot afford to pay the toll will use. But then the infrastructure, what it means is that whoever starts that road knows that his own money is being tied in, so he must finish it, and he will not start a project he will not complete. And the same thing goes even for, how, even for housing. The government has no beach, should begin to uh, withdraw itself from saying I'm funding this budget, then Nigeria is virtually dependent on even states now are gradually dependent on the federal budget. Mm -hmm. Every business in Nigeria, let me be frank with you, anytime budget funds are not released, the, the economic climate in Nigeria is so dull. Mm -hmm. Businesses virtually grind to a halt or collapse because everybody, one way or the other, is tied to the budget. At state level, is the same thing for states. Even to pay salary becomes a problem once the federation account, no money is released. Can you imagine that many states were unable to pay salary as soon as there was this little the, the hiccup? A lot of states state. are still not paying, They're not paying salaries. salaries and so what, is, what are the states for? Why don't we merge them? Those who cannot sustain them, their existence, why, you know, why we respect political distribution of states? But where a state is there and the state is not, state cannot even generate any IGR to even fund, go, go to the means to even fund this for generating said how can people do it buy a computer in this okay. IT stage so this is the problem where we, we, we just have a budgets. few more minutes to mm. the end of the show about two minutes or thereabout and I want us to end on the uh, uh, in the area of abandoned projects I did talk to two gentlemen last week still on infrastructure and they were of the view at least one of them was of the view he told me last week Nancy let's just put a halt to any ongoing projects mm -hmm. let's concentrate on finishing abandoned projects. Yes. What, what would you say about that? Because we have about 12 trillion naira worth of abandoned projects in the country as at last year, 12 trillion naira. Yes, you, you, there are some, you know, you consider this project maybe because of construction. There are some projects, like when, I, when they introduced this uh, 6334, uh, uh, you know, the intention was- For the educational uh, system. Uh, uh -huh, technical mm -hmm. decision. I was in my secondary school, they brought a 40 feet container of equipment, abandoned it today. It's not being opened. They, they didn't even open it to talk of installing them. It's, I, I know, it's going you to know be the, the issue <laughs> of what, <laughs> what we need to so do. Is, so is so what we need to money, yeah. yes, you know what, what, what we need to do first in our project. That's why I said this of project management is key. And two, we should for our what they call national agenda. Let's pick a project. If electricity is our uh, is, is our uh, problem. Instead of this government coming having seven point agenda, uh, four point agenda, if it is 10 years we used to take electricity to where we want, there should be a legislation and the money should be attached to it that as far as they are passing budget, this money should go for electricity. Okay. The remaining one, we can use it to sustain the system. But I know that if electricity, we fix it right now. Almost half of our problem is solved. Okay. Prof, okay. very quickly. We yeah, one quickly, what I want to say is that. Um, mm. Let's uh, get to the root of the problem and then seek a solution to it. And by this, what I mean is that uh, we should take a. We'll, we'll yes, be we'll be having. So we should no take an inventory. We should have an inventory of abandoned projects, no matter in different categories, not just infrastructure. Infrastructure is obvious because you can see the road is decayed. You can see the road construction. The, com the man was there paving. Suddenly, he all his machines disappear. 
But then there are hidden abandoned projects. Let the different MD, uh, MDGs, the different ministries come up and let's even do a comprehensive list of abandoned projects in Nigeria. And now ask ourselves, what do we need? If we need three trillion or three hundred trillion, now let's prioritize which ones and get are the yes, model. model to okay. finance them. Okay. Okay. And, what, and, and okay. once we have the financing model to finance them, we'll again prioritize them in terms of which one contributes to the economy, okay. which one contributes to the society and the human being, and then uh, we proceed from there. But okay, let's stop avant, uh, giving all these white elephant uh, projects, creating new ones when the old ones have not been completed. I think we'll leave it at that. Many thanks, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Mm. Thank All right, you. I've been uh, speaking uh, with uh, Professor Charles of Wibu, who is the uh, who was the former Director General of National Building and Road Research Institute, as well as Tajudim Bisimin Lai, the Managing Director of Simites Group. We've been looking at uh, infrastructure development in Nigeria, abandoned projects and what have you. But many thanks for joining us on today's edition of